Today, image hosting scripts are few and far between. Actually, let me rephrase that. Today, good free image hosting scripts are few and far between. With so many cloud hosting options available like Google Photos, Flickr, Imager, and Amazon Photos, just to name a handful, it's no wonder image scripts phased out and have become a thing of the past. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. Today, image hosting scripts are becoming much more demanding with the Ryzen self-hosting and home lab geeks like myself. Chevaretto is a great option that makes image hosting simple and fun. Whether you're looking to host an HD wallpaper community where users can register and download their favorite wallpapers for their desktops and laptops, how about a GIF website loaded with all the cute Baby Yoda GIFs ever known to mankind? Family photos? Not a problem. Chevaretto allows you to completely lock down your site and make it as personal as you wish, hiding all of your precious images from anyone who is not logged in. If I didn't tell you about it, you probably wouldn't even know that Chevaretto is 13 years old this year. The developer just made a blog post on the 7th of July announcing how they're actually going to be moving forward to version 4 soon. Seeing that blog post on their website speaks volumes. It tells me that the project is still under active development, and a version 4 will be coming out soon, but today we'll be focusing on version 3. Chevaretto really is a breath of fresh air. It's super easy to install, it uses Docker, you don't have to have any fancy server set up or anything like that. That's what we're going to do right now. I'm actually going to show you how to set this up and self-host it right on your own system. Let's get started. To get started, you'll need to have Docker and Portainer installed. I'm using Docker and Portainer on a copy of MX Linux through Proxmox. I also have a video on how to install Docker and Portainer on Ubuntu in less than two minutes. You can reference that video here in the link above. If you don't have those installed, you'll need to go ahead and reference that video first to do that. Once you're done installing those, you can come back to this video at about the two minute mark to start the Chevretto installation. So this is the Docker image we're going to be using for Chevretto. It's by MTAN. It's got over 500,000 pulls. And on this page, you'll see a Docker Compose if you scroll down the page. We're gonna copy this, we're gonna change a couple things, and we're gonna take it over into our Portainer. So we'll jump into Portainer on the Stacks page. We'll click Add Stack, paste that in. And then before we change anything, we're gonna go ahead and give it a name of Chevaretto. First thing we're gonna wanna change is the version at the top to two because Portainer only accepts version two on the version that I'm running. The next thing I'm going to change is the database volume. There's no forward slash here, so currently in this current state, it wouldn't actually map any files to a folder on my system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna do a forward slash and put Chevaretto and then another forward slash. And now I'm gonna take this, I'm going to copy it. I'm gonna bring it down to the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing down here in the volume here. Go ahead and paste. I'll add one more forward slash here and we'll create a folder for the pictures, the images to be mapped to a folder called pictures. So let's go ahead and type in pictures. You can name these folders whatever you want. One thing that's very important to note before we deploy this is to know that Chevretto ships with a maximum upload image size of two megabytes. If that's not enough for you, you have to create a PHP INI file. And that is why this volume is here. Keep in mind, all of this information will be in the description below for you to reference, so you can copy and paste all of this as it is. But with that being said, we do have to go into our machine and actually create the Chevaretto folder. Then we have to add a PHP INI file, but that is only if you need your images to be larger than two megabytes. So to do that, I just right click in the directory and create an empty file, call it php.ini. Now we need to go ahead and edit the PHP INI file by adding in both the post and upload max file size. You can change these to pretty much whatever you want, but it's a good idea to keep them at or around 20 megabytes. Once you've done that, go ahead and click save and close out the PHP INI file. Let's jump back over to our portainer page here where we were editing the stack and take note of the port that we're using here as well. So I like to put mine on 8011 because that's where my reverse proxy is pointing. So just make note of the port. If it's not available, Go ahead and change it here. You may have noticed these last few lines here. I'm going to go ahead and remove those because for this purpose, I will not be needing those. But you won't need to worry about that because in the compose that I set up for you guys to copy, it won't have those lines in there anyway. All right, now is a good time to check for spelling errors and make sure that there's no spelling errors. Chevretto. I spelt Chevretto wrong. So I'm going to remove that R and that is going to be pasted down here as well. Chevretto. 
All right, now if I were to click deploy, we may have had some problems, but maybe not. It's good to make sure that you have your spelling correct. So with that being said, we are good to go and we're going to click deploy the stack here at the bottom. Okay, it said we had success. There we go. So now what we wanna do is go ahead and make sure our containers are running. It does say that Chevretto is running. Sometimes it does take this a few minutes to continue the process, the setup process, I should say. But if everything checked out, we should be able to click here because I updated my endpoints. Oh, you know what? That can be fixed pretty easily using a chmod command, and I can show you guys how to do that right now. So let's jump over to our system where this is being installed and take care of that. Okay, so here I am on the system we're installing this on, and I'm going to go ahead and open a terminal. So let's do that here. And now I'm just going to chmod the folder where the pictures are being stored. So let's paste this little command in here. Do a slash chevretto. <laughs> I can't type and talk at the same time. Chevretto, and then slash pictures. If you remember, that's the uh, directory I stored the pictures in. So that, if we go to our system error where we were getting here, yeah, there we go. So let's go ahead and run the uh, install. I went ahead and saved you guys the grief of me typing all that out. So I went ahead and filled it all in, which you can see here. And we do have a website mode, which you can choose at the bottom between personal and community. Basically the personal lets you personalize it so it's not public. And obviously community would make it a more of a, it would set it up as a more of a community version where anyone can register. So for now we're gonna go personal and I'm gonna go ahead and click install Chevretto. There it is, it says installation complete. And now we can go to our dashboard and this is it. This is the Chevretto admin dashboard. Congratulations you guys, by the way, for installing this successfully. Obviously if you have any questions about the installation, be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll get back with you as quick as I can on that. But I wanna go over the settings really quick with you guys and there's actually a sub menu and we want to check out our image upload just to make sure that the image upload size changed. Remember we added that PHP INI file. I wanna make sure this is where you can find that. And there it is right there. Yes, 20 and 21. So it does match the values we have in the file. That's good. And I want to quickly note that if you do not add the php.ini file during the installation, that's okay. But do know that you're only going to be able to upload files up to two megabytes. So that's the reason we added that PHP INI file. It's not necessary for it to work, however. All right, let's take a look at some theme settings here. I do want to let you guys know that you can change this to a dark mode. If you go back under the settings and go to theme, you can change that from light to dark. And this white bar at the top can also be made black. So you can save that, you can change your logo and the favicon stuff all from here. There's a slew of different settings you can change in here. Let's go ahead and go over a couple more small things here. For example, this is the homepage of Chevretto. And if you ask me, it looks a little risque, a little more on the adult side. So for personal reasons, we can go ahead and change that by going into the dashboard. And you'd think it would be in settings under theme, but it's actually not. <laughs> it's under homepage. And there's the image right there. This can be changed by clicking browse and selecting an image and then scrolling down and clicking save. So let's check it out now and see how it looks. Oh, much better. That actually looks really good. I'm happy with that choice. This is just an image I found on freepick.com. They have really, really nice images and I use those for my thumbnails on my uh, YouTube channel as well, if you haven't noticed. They have really good stuff there. Check them out, freepick.com. No, they don't sponsor me. All right, so let's get on to the gist and the meat of this. You guys wanna know how easy it is to upload images to this? It actually is super easy. I have a folder of images here on the left side. I'm just gonna copy them all and drop them. Just like that, super easy. And really cool is you can click on the little pencil icon on each of the images, change the title, the image size. There's also an auto delete feature, kind of like Snapchat. But since I'm using this for a personal uh, family photo thing, I just set it to don't auto delete, but you can go all the way up to a month and it will auto automatically delete your images for you. Then you have your description. You can change that as well. Since I didn't make any changes, I'll just close out of that and click upload. Super duper fast. It gives you the percentage here at the top. The visual is really nice on how this uploads images. And once it's done, it gives you the embed codes. You can choose HTML, BB code, markdown. This is super, super cool. And then you can copy those and put them wherever you want. View all of my images and there they are. 
All right, one more thing I want to cover before we wrap this up is the privacy part of it. So you can obviously use this as a community website where anyone can register, but I also want to talk about the privacy part of it. So if we go into settings and under website at the very bottom, if you have it set as public, that means I'll just open this up in a new window here, open a new window. If I was to log out, I'll sign out, go to homepage. If I click, see right now I'm logged out. If I click view all images, I can still see all these images. So I'll sign back in. And then I'll go back here and I'll change this to private. That's what you need right there. To make it private, click save, you're done. Then I'll go back to the home page again and then we'll log out, go to the home page, and then you are presented with the login. So that way nobody can see your private images. That's how you do that. So that is it. Now that you have Chevretto installed, Go ahead and play with it. Let me know what you think about it. I really enjoyed it. Um, I haven't paid for the paid features yet, but there's just a couple things on there that I didn't really need anyways, like the ability to like photos and follow people. I'm just currently using this for my own setup at home and it's not being exposed to the internet. So I don't really have a need to have a community type style of Chevrolet version running. With that being said, that's going to wrap up today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you found this video helpful, toss me a like on the video. And if you have any questions, like always, leave a comment. I'll get back with you guys as quickly as I can. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.